Hello everyone. Today's session is all about um, security. And the reason this is important with any SD1 solution, not just VeloCloud, is because um, you're going away from that model in which you bring all the traffic to your data center via private lines. And then there uh, at the peering with the internet, you would just get a firewall cluster. So that is the one point in which you will be able to specify your security policies, your content filtering, etc. Now we want to introduce direct internet access at all the branches and remote locations. And that poses a new security threat because anybody can exploit this, hack into your branch, and then from there, follow all the overlays and have access to your entire state. So again, with any SD1 solution, security is one of the most critical concerns. Now, focusing on VeloCloud, ever since their inception, uh, the founders were interested in purely the SD1 aspect. So this means making sure that when a user is accessing a cloud application or a data center application, they'll be able to do that um, as smoothly as possible. Because VeloCloud never had a, their own next generation security uh, that actually forced them to take a step back look what's out there in the market, um, what's trending, etc., and made sure to build that flexibility in the solution. So no matter if you want to go with um, an on-prem version in which each of your branches have a firewall in them, uh, or you want to backhaul all the traffic to your own data centers or to a cloud um, security company like Zscaler or Semantic, for example, you'll be able to do that extremely easily. So in today's session, I'm going to be focusing on a few different things. First of all, what's the security that's already inbuilt in the edges, including the segmentation piece and also the application aware firewall. Then uh, looking into the options of adding next generation security. Um, so there are two things that we will be exploring there. First of all, the traditional way in which you deploy a UTM at each of your sites which is greatly simplified because you'll be able to take the um, software code and run it on the edges themselves, as opposed to get an extra box. Or the newer approach in which you will be using uh, cloud firewall services such as Zscaler or Semantic, and you just send all the traffic to them and they will do the um, uh, security and filtering for you. Again, remember, you know, you might not be getting next generation security um, services from um, VeloCloud at the moment. However, uh, this has some benefits because you'll be able to look uh, in the market, compare different vendors with each other, compare different methods of delivering those security services uh, and from there decide. So we give you that flexibility and make sure that no matter your decision, um, you'll be able to implement that in just a few clicks. So let me show you how. So let's take a simple example. We have a branch connected uh, with a few lines to the internet. We then have a hub on the right hand side. Um, you'll see the main site's firewall here. And this is where we used to set policies. Uh, back in the old days where everything was flowing back to the data center and then off the internet. And then we also have um, one of the gateways. So we'll use this as a third party gateway towards cloud security services. So the first point in which we can implement any sort of security is on the edge itself. So this is where we can use things such as the layer seven stateful firewall, we can also use uh, segmentation policies. So we have up to 16 segments, very similar to uh, VRF Lite in Cisco. And so this means that if you have, let's say, IoT traffic, guest traffic, um, maybe you are um, providing services to different tenants, uh, you keep uh, each of them in a different segment. Uh, each segment has its own routing table and there is no leaks uh, between them. So, you know, you just make sure 
uh, that, for example, your guests will never be able to reach your corporate devices, um, and thus hackers cannot use uh, un these unsecured devices to get into your estate. Another thing you can use is obviously DNS redirect. Um, there are loads of uh, services out there that build security uh, just by inspecting DNS queries. Um, so obviously when you set up your DHCP pools, et cetera, on the branch edge, you can do DNS redirect. But what about um, things such as intrusion prevention, uh, uh, maybe uh, content filtering based on lists, etc.? There are a few ways you can do this. First of all, you can obviously tunnel the traffic you want to, to be inspected with the overlays back to uh, the hub in your data center. You can do that per segment. So for example, the guest segment, you can just uh, let it flow out to the internet, but then your corporate segment can be part of a hub and spoke topology. And then you use your firewall cluster at data center to do everything. And this method will resemble um, very closely the way that we uh, used to do things. Another option is to uh, use uh, VNFs on the local device here. So number two, VNFs. And there are a few options you can choose, uh, whatever that's Paolo Alto, uh, you get the VM series from them. Uh, Fortinet, um, yeah, you can get the FortiGate codes, uh, or you can use checkpoint VNFs also. A few things to note here, you will need separate licenses. Um, although I make it very easy for you to upload the code in the orchestrator and you know push it to the edges, um, all the management of the policies and all the reporting will need to be done in its own uh, UI. So depending on um, the vendor uh, you have, they'll have their own ways to interact with the VNFs. Um, obviously, if you have uh, firewalls at other places and they're all managed from the same um, centralized platform, you'll be able to manage everything, including the, the edges here. And last but not least, uh, not all uh, VeloCloud edges support VNFs. So at the moment we have the likes of the 520V, um, the 840, so they support uh, all the three providers I just mentioned. And then we have the new 6 series, the 620, 640, and 680. Uh, we just released them uh, and they are currently tested to support Checkpoint. Uh, further news uh, will be coming on Palo Alto and Fortinet. I'm going to show you the data sheet, but um, do have in mind that once you turn uh, the VNF capability on, uh, you will see a decrease in throughput. So some of these boxes will allow you to carry up to 100 meg all the way to uh, 500, depending on the branch size. Um, also, there is no requirement to have everything filtered by the VNFs. So you can uh, filter per segment uh, or even in the same segment, you can just specify what VLANs need to be inspected. So you have your local area network, traffic hits the internal switch uh, on the edge, then it gets forwarded to the security VNF. That makes a, a decision, and if traffic is allowed to pass, that goes into the main SD1 routing process. So the VNF kicks in before the SD1 process does. Last but not least, uh, you can use a um, cloud security service. Uh, so. I think Zscaler is one of the best examples here, but then you get all these other companies like Semantic and Checkpoint and Palo Alto. Everybody's now migrating to uh, this model of having firewall uh, services delivered from the cloud. And the way that you access this is um, simply by pointing traffic and redirecting it towards an address on the internet, right? Now there are two ways of doing this. 
you can do this via the gateway. So this is where you define the security service as a non VeloCloud site. Uh, so this means that we bring the overlay to gateway. The advantage of this is obviously you can do DMPO across the circuits. And then from the third party gateway, we connect via IPsec. And we have loads of templates depending on the providers here, but uh, VeloCloud has a lot of flexibility when it comes to the you know, authentication and encryption mechanisms you can use. Gateway wise, this third party gateway, as we previously discussed in the video dedicated to gateways, is chosen based on the proximity with the third party. So if you have multiple branches and you spin off, let's say, another one here and connected to the same uh, security service, then you will start seeing a hub and spoke topology being formed. Now there is another way of connecting this, and uh, this is called a cloud security uh, service. And this actually allows you to bypass the gateway and create an IPsec tunnel directly from the edge into the cloud security service of choice. So I'm going to show you how this looks like in the orchestrator, uh, but again, it depends if you define it as a non VeloCloud site, so this will use the gateways, or as a cloud security service. And this will use the edges default ability to create IPsec tunnels directly. Now, although I don't want to cram this diagram, uh, you'll see that when you start defining these services, you have the option of high availability so you'll be able to define uh, two peering points uh, on the third party side and also um, utilize two different gateways so just to summarize um, we looked at the security capabilities of the edge itself including the way that we can segment traffic and we can apply uh, stateful firewall rules here we have discussed how you can still use your main data center firewalls to impose policy by bringing all the branch traffic back. And you can do that per segment, so you don't need to bring everything back. You can bring only uh, the traffic that you want to get filtered. We have discussed about the capability of running VNFs here and specified the fact that there are specific edges that allow you to run this and obviously you need to license that product and run it from its own ui although we make the deployment extremely easy um, and also we discussed that if you want to take advantage of the new way of enforcing security and that is via the cloud security service you can do that either via the third party gateway or directly from the edge. I wanted to show you quickly the latest data sheet. As you see, this has been updated recently to include the new modules. And as you scroll down, you'll see on page number six the throughput capabilities of uh, each of the new edges so 620 640 and 680 there is the 1840 here at 500 megs um, interestingly um, the 520v is currently missing although the capability is extremely similar to the 620 here so if i scroll up you'll see here the 520v with a note saying that can sustain up to 100 megs when the firewall VNF is enabled. Not really sure why this has been missed in this table here, but if you don't remember it again, just scroll a page up. So let's look inside the, the orchestrator I have at home. Um, you'll actually see that the monitor page does allow you to have a high level view um, and understanding of the edges that have uh, VNF enabled and which ones are running and which ones are don't. Uh, also an idea of the non VeloCloud sites. So one of the primary ways of connecting to cloud security services and configuring it is um, actually very easy.
let's look at the inbuilt security. Uh, just fire up a profile, and then you'll see this firewall tab. Um, this is actually somewhat new um, and has been introduced uh, over the last year. You'll see that you can turn on the stateful firewall. Um, you can select the segment, so each of your segments can have different rules. Uh, and then from here, you just specify the rules. You match a particular traffic. Where does it come from? Where does it go? Um, potentially uh, define an application as well. And then you can have uh, this idea of allow and drop traffic. The segments can be uh, defined here. In the segment tab, uh, you have up to 16 of them. There is a service VLAN uh, I left empty, but uh, if you're using any sort of VNFs, uh, you'll need different service VLANs. So the VNF actually understands what um, segment the traffic is coming from. And once you define these, you'll then be able to um, to see them as options inside the profiles. Um, I obviously showed you the option of the firewall, uh, but you then you will see that there are options per uh, for the business policies, for the quality of service, and also options on the way that you configure the routing and the cloud VPN functionality. If you remember, this is where I mentioned that you can, for example, bring your traffic back uh, to your hub just by enabling branch to hub and selecting your hubs. And you can leave that uh, obviously uh, turned off for your guest traffic um, and leave that in their own separate segment. Now, um, in order to uh, connect to any sort of third party, including the um, services like Zscaler, for example, uh, you'll need to configure either uh, non velo cloud sites or cloud security services here. Remember the difference is that the non velo cloud site uses a gateway in the middle that's closest geographically to that site, while the cloud security service um, allows you to connect that edge directly. Um, and once you define them, you'll then be able to um, call them in the profiles. So as you can see here, I can create a new uh, VeloCloud site. Uh, I can specify uh, the third party I'm connected to. In my case, I have a uh, Zscaler uh, termination to um, two of their gateways. I can click Advanced, then I can also use uh, redundant cloud gateways. So now I have two terminations on my side. Here you'll also be able to uh, define your VNFs and apply the VNFs uh, licenses. You'll see the three VNFs we have. Once you select them, then we'll uh, ask you where the image is stored and how you obviously want to um, authenticate while downloading it and um, the checksum to make sure that the image is not uh, corrupted. And once that happens, you'll actually be able to uh, deploy the VNFs on the edges. Unfortunately, I don't have an edge. 520V or any of the new 6 series to show you, uh, but I can quickly show you how easy it is to call the third party site. So you just go inside the profile here, you click on the device, you need to turn on the Cloud VPN, and you have an option for the non Velo Cloud site. So as you see, I enable it, and this is the a list of all the options I have. Uh, remember, you have to define them here in the network services first and then call them. They'll not be able to appear here automatically. Or I can use the cloud security service. So this is where I can connect the edge directly via IPsec. If the edge was supporting um, VNF configurations, then I will have a VNF tab here. That will actually allow me to call the right VNF and then specify what part of the traffic I want to inspect.